going to demonstrate how we install Perflex on a guitar. We're using quarter inch Perflex for this particular guitar. So we have already installed the binding and the perf perfling lines of black, white, black fiber. They're just black, white and glued together. Uh, I have a quarter inch piece of uh, perfling line uh, between the binding and this quarter inch um, Teflon strip that's in here. It's actually two pieces of eighth inch. And it's all taped on and then super glued in place. And when that's done and dry, then you're ready to take the tape off and take the Teflon strips out. So we're just about ready to, to do that. <clears throat> This is the same technique that people have been using for years to put abalone strips in, but in this case, because we're using quarter inch wide Perflex, you need wider Teflon strips. Okay, and once the Teflon strips are out, then I, I like to clean the channel to make sure that there are, there are no high spots, because sometimes the super glue can get underneath the Teflon strips and leave a little lump and you want to make sure that your Perflex is is flush all the way around to to the top so we want to clean out the channel a little bit for cleaning out um, the groove I've taped some 150 grit sandpaper to a piece of uh, sponge rubber and that fits right in the groove and we're able to just get in there and sort of sand the bottom of the groove and I like to clean up the top of it just to, just to clean up the mess, all the glue and the, the tape goo that's on there. So be very, very careful not to dig into the, the top with your plane blade. But you still want to leave the binding and the purfling standing proud because when you, after you put the glue the purflex in, it, you fill it with the black epoxy mix. This will hold it in. Okay, so here you can you can see the groove that's going to be quarter inch wide, and we have uh, black white fiber purfling. So black is against the redwood top, and then the white, and then you'll have our purfling, which is mostly in black, the perflex, and then another white black, and then the binding. Previously, you want to make sure that when you route the ledge for the perflex that it will enable the Perflex to, to uh, lay perfectly flush with the top. The wood on the Perflex is 70 or 40 thousandths thick, so overall 70 thousandths, so that's plenty of wood to sand. So now we're ready to put this in. Um, and we just basically tack it down with super glue. Uh, I use a medium thick super glue, and I also like to use black because if you have an excess of the glue coming out over the top into the Perflex. If you use clear super glue and you were to use an accelerator, it has a tendency to, to flash off and dry white, and then you'd have white in your pattern. So I just start off by laying a, a little bead in the groove, maybe three or four inches, and you basically just start putting this in here. Laying it down there nice. You want to kind of make sure that it's sitting flat so I have a piece of rubber that's got a flat edge on it. It's 3 16 thick. It's not a full quarter, so you're making sure that you're in between the purfling lines and you're, you're able to hold it flat. You don't you just sort of give it a, a little time to, to set before you move on down to the next section. And you can spritz it if you want. Just a little tiny bead in there. down. with the rubber you can do the compound bends 
Just make sure it's held down nice and flat. If you have one part of the pattern sticking sticking way up, you could you could sand through it, possible. I mean, you shouldn't. If everything is nice and flat, and you hold it down and stick it down good with the super glue, it should be good. I'm just gonna just spritz it and make sure it's dry. Here's an example of the mating ends that we have on all of our Perflex products. This one is just a little more obvious than most of them, but they just fit right together. So you'll never, they'll just go together seamlessly. And every single design we have has a male and female end. They fit together like a puzzle. And you just simply butt it up. down just make sure it's flat and tight at the end. It only took three strips to do this particular guitar, little parlor guitar, and some to spare. the excess and now we're ready to put the fill in. All right we now have all the Perflex super glued in and uh, clean and ready to go. The next step is to fill it with epoxy and black powder. Uh, there are several products you can use. Uh, this is Bob Smith Industries 20 minute finish cure. This is Envirotex uh, pour on high gloss finish, also an epoxy, and this is Z-epoxy, which you can get from LMI. And the powder that I use to color it is a dust-free black tempera paint. I'm going to be using, because I'm out of most of this stuff, I'll be using the Bob Smith Industries 20-Minute Finish Cure. Some of the 
tools that I use are silicone. I have a silicone pinch bowl, a silicone spatula, and silicone measuring spoons. I'm going to be using a tablespoon of each. The mixture is one to one to one. Use one part hardener, one part resin, and one part powder. So it's a nice, easy mixture. So you want to mix it carefully. Tablespoon of that. Tablespoon of that. And with the uh, spatula, the rounded end on the spatula and the round bottoms of the spoons, it's real easy to clean it all out. And it also comes in handy when you're mixing it. You want to be very certain to get a, a good mixture. You don't want to have any parts, either either part un, unmixed. If you have a little glob of part A or part B that hasn't been mixed and it ends up in your in your guitar, it'll it'll remain soft. You'll have a soft gooey spot. So you want to have a really good mixture. I also prefer to mix the epoxy up as completely as possible before I add the powder. For some of the same reasons, it's possible that the powder might absorb into one of the mixtures more than the other. I don't know if it's true or not. That's just the way I feel about it. So that's how I'm going to do it. With the round bottom on the silicone bowl and the round spatula, you don't have corners like you will in, a, in some of the mixing cups. So you're less likely to have any of those unmixed areas. So you really want it to be mixed well. And you've got plenty of drying time on this stuff. It stays liquid for quite a while. Okay, and I got that mixed up. It's gonna get mixed more, but I think it's mixed up adequately. Now I get a tablespoon of the powder. Dump that in there. And continue to mix this in. And one of the other things I like to do is heat it up as I'm mixing it. It has a tendency to make it a little bit thinner and it also eliminates some of the bubbles. This is a heat gun. Uh, hair dryer works as well. It's probably safer. You have to be careful not to overdo it. We're not trying to boil this stuff. And don't put it in the microwave or the oven. Just, just warm it up a little bit as you're mixing it. You can see it gets a little bit thinner as you're mixing it. Kind of pre pops the bubbles. Okay, the glue is all mixed up. A um, couple of things I want to quick do. I want to put a little masking tape at the very ends here so that the glue doesn't run down into your neck joint. Just kind of stop it from running out. Everything else will be contained. All right, one of the other things I like to do is to also heat up the guitar itself. It helps the, the epoxy mixture flow deep into the pattern. My shop is a little cool. You don't want to overdo this either. And this is a heat gun, so I have it on the low setting. You don't want to, you don't want your glue to come apart in your guitar. You're just warming it up, just gently warm. You can feel it. It's just warmer than it was before. You can go around it slowly about five or six times. Pick this one more time. You can see the bubbles popping and it's just it's much clearer now. Another handy feature of the silicone pinch bowl is it kind of makes it easier to, to pour the mixture in.
And remember, everything is sealed with I use shellac. You can use any sealer you want. So none of this black will get into your into your top. Right, just spread it a little bit. There's still plenty left to add more if you need it. And remember the black white purfling lines are standing proud so that's going to kind of create a little dam to hold this stuff in. And then I like to hit it with the heat gun a little bit. You can see the little bubbles popping. This is where it didn't want to go in. It will now flow in a little bit better. Remember, don't overdo it. You don't want to boil it. You don't want to force this stuff. You don't want to make it so hot that it goes into the maple. The maple is pre-sealed before you get it too. So it's not going to absorb the black. We've got plenty of working time, so I just like to work it, make sure it's all in there. You will end up, when it hardens, you'll, there'll still be some bubbles, some little pinholes. And you just uh, fill those, spot fill it later on. I depends upon how many there are. Sometimes you get none, sometimes you get a bunch, and I'm not sure why. The, the warming makes a big difference. It helps a lot. But it's real easy to, to fill them later on. Just hit it one more time. See a little gap where all of a sudden the bubble will come up. And that's pretty much it. Just let it sit overnight. Tomorrow morning, you come back and scrape it and sand it, and we'll show you that tomorrow. Okay, it's day two now. Uh, the epoxy is dry, and it's ready to be scraped off and sanded. I have a freshly sharpened scraper, and I put strapping tape on the ends. Just go around it a couple of layers to prevent digging in with the corner of the scraper. Just a sort of a safety thing, a precaution. So now I'm ready to just start scraping this off. And you should be able to scrape it off right down to the pattern. the pattern. A few little spots left that we'll get when we sand. So I'm done scraping and I'm ready to start sanding it with some uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Draw an exhaust here. Now that we're done sanding, uh, we're going to put a little bit of shellac on it and we can see what we've got and it's, it's looking really nice. Yes, look at that. It just brings the pattern out and it just jumps right out and it's very nice. And it's done. Mm -hmm. 